thing in all the That's the vegetable patch. Get the lettuce once, you see? Get the lettuce. Do you see any wheat? You see only moss. So the good old reliable Uchikikori, some of them damaged by the birds it seems. But the best place for them is to grow them over the compost heap. If you're starting now, that was what he had in his mind. Charles Doding's uh, vegetable garden in Homemakers Alhampton. This Alhampton is a little bit of a strange name. Why Al? Hampton, is it Arabic or something? Phoenicians were in this area in the past. It's Lebanese. Great color, I say. You see the solar panels on top of the building? That's such a small land and uh, they can make a good crop. And yet they have some space for what oh look at these beans. Yellow climbing beans. Just because of the colour. Beautiful color combinations with these charts. Can you find a single wheat here? This is an apple tree. And that's a... What's that apple? All kind of... Chicories. Oh, yeah. And French dwarf beans. And leeks as first and only crop. These are harvested. All the courgettes. This one is mulched because there are some weeds yet which are growing there through them. And dives. This is a new area, it has mulched. All the winter squashes. 
and this is a bed of the Jerusalem artichoke. The apple is not doing bad. Losing an apple. That's a polytunnel full of tomato. Let's go have a look. Mmm, the smell of basil. Mm. And I think the polyton is just a little bit bigger than ours. Probably one and a half meter. And most of the tomatoes are harvested. I see one single large black Russian one. And those ones are the ones that we saw in the Italy. Uh -huh. I have a video about it. And some peppers. And a good mulch. That's what we have done also. A tomato and uh, aubergine in a pot on a compost heap with some squash into squash. Or are they? No, they look like melons. The melons he told you are not going to be well this year. In every space is just aubergine. I think my polyton is much better. Really, really good. My own hands. And basil. And some other. Oh! Bell pepper. It's really prolific. And some of that Cape gooseberry. You should do a basil patch like this. The idea is that half of the polytum is vegetables and herbs. Sure. You don't do just all polytum taken by tomato. This is a new bed that I made for the BBC. I cut and screwed. The size on the day before, just resting on the ground, okay, and topped it with compost. And then planted this for BBC. I see radishes, I see puck tree, I see this uh, mustard, I see freely mustard, some, I think this is broccoli. And some freely mustard again, and then buck tree again, it's kind of oriental leaves. So that's what you will see in BBC. That is Charles Dowding's greenhouse, and you see more tomatoes here, and growing the seeds here, seedlings, and they're getting ready for it. Oh, look at the aubergines, I like that. And again, in the greenhouse, we see a balance between the amount of the rows of tomato and herbs like basil. Now, one row also of origin. This is the tallest origins I've seen so far. It looks like a commercial. And at the end, you see some peppers. 
and a big cucumber, but I don't think they are tasty. They look very tough. And here, triad bed, made in July, May 2015 for my online course. Yakun. Yakun is this kind of things from the Andes. Bukan Yakun. A little shed, and then we come to the cabbages mixed with some flowers. And those are, I think, also those Andean thingies. Oka, I think. That's oka. And then some uh, oriental leaves, then some. Uh, cherry, I think, and then a courgette in that corner and seedlings for the next generation. These are some of them, I think, are turnip or oriental leaves. Turnip, they can be oriental leaves. But he don't plant in rows, he plants in plugs. So he will, he will not waste seeds. And a little bit of this hot plant. And a proper place for drying your onions. And some seeds growing here. This is also where Charles Odin keeps his... Uh, that's a conservatory, he keeps his chikikuris there. The solar panel to provide some money for... the off-grid. And that is Charles himself very rare to be seen properly. Some carrots, some kale. Those are the finger of the parsnip. I'll send you an email. Hello, Charles. How are you doing? Nice to see you, Charles. Grabbing a picture. Ideal. Twenty thousand pound he earns. Charles Dowding he says, uh, after paying for all the costs and tax and everything. And considering that you will also have your food and also you have your after all this also. This is just from the land, the vegetables and everything. But considering that, he also has courses and lectures and other things. So he he will he will earn enough just to have a life. To enjoy life, you know, at the end of the day, the purpose is just doing what you like. He has done it in the in the Zimbabwe. He has done it in France, and now he's doing it. He has done it up to three years ago. He was uh, somewhere else. Then he came here and uh, settled here and just started again here. Okay. It's just been pasteurized and that is brilliant.
This is a cooking apple that he recommends. I have a one tree like this. Okay, this is a tree which stays here for many years, and that's another one. The distance between them is about yeah, 180 to 2 meters, 180. And this one just probably lasts one season or one and a half season. So just using this space. And as you see here, there are parsnips. And they're using the space between them to grow some lovely pumpkins and winter squash. Different kind of apples and again the winter squash. Oh look at this asparagus bird. Probably I should have asked Charles to talk over this. When I was talking with him, I should have filmed it. But Charles has had some videos explaining what he is doing. But uh, seeing the vegetables in first, in first hand, for example, this gooseberry, something else. Look at this. On this giant onion, just lonely here. And a bed full of yeah, rhubarb and raspberries and onions between them. Using the space, that's my idea. Intensive gardening, horticulture. And here we are back. This stage is producing something. I experimented with many uh, pumpkins and I found Uchikikuri, Moscow, the province, and some other ones are really good to grow. It's autumn raspberries are doing now. Get them ready. Quite a large size. Love this mass of the lush asparagus. What dense it is. It's taller than me. They're well established here. These Balotti beans, they're ahead of ours. Beautiful. And this is back of the compost heaps. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So, whatever you invest in compost practically is not wasted. The space is perfect. And this part of it can be used for drying the onions.
second I picture below it shows those in Scarlet. I think it is, but if I yeah. Google it. Because yeah. just yeah. hawk moths is a brown it, version of that with like a spike, actual spike. I mean, if a caterpillar that big, it's going to be big, isn't it? So Gosh, it's quite massive! Quite because if you think of something yeah. like a, I don't know, a red admiral. It's the size of a finger. Yeah, yeah, we're walking past. Do you want me to move my hand? That's all right, whenever you want, yes. I thought we'd better tell you. That's what was a scale, now we have the scale. Thank you very much. We've gone really happy because we've been talking about this for a long time. Thank you very much. 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 Thank you I'm interested to hear you saying that. Okay, dig and no dig methods he's talking about Charles loading. Okay, he says that there is not much difference practically in the harvest, the amount of the harvest, the weight of it each year. But uh, the effort you do in digging is an extra job that you impose on yourself, so why bother? That makes logic to me because I started like that actually. But then because I had to work and do other things, life commitments, I could not really keep on the wheat, top of the weeds. <laughs> so, anyway. Mm. She looks really happy at what you're saying and you look really demonstrated. Oh, you have your baby now, huh? Baby pressed <laughs> apple juice. <laughs> oh, that's something spicy. I've got a few bones in there. are no worms here. Yeah. Mm. Organic yeah. matter. No, they are just uh, things from the apple. Mm. Mm -hmm. Your granddad, huh? Yes, you can see. Oh, he's growing some uh, tomatoes outside. Mm. That's good actually to know that how they will survive. No sign of life. Inside the polytunnel, inside the greenhouse, and look at this over there. Really good size, and yet more continue coming. What he has done, he has kept it dry here, and then cutting the leaves and branches which are under the fruiting terrace. So that's the first terrace here. So anything under it is cut because they're not producing anything. I did it once like that. And what happened was that I ended up with blight because water was seeping from here. That door for the bucket. What's the compost you? toilet? Let us see how it looks inside. Oh, wood saw. Oh, so simple. And there is some, the other end. Should I lift the lead and see how it looks? Right. You just close the toilet, put the wood chip in, and then you just pull it out here and compost it. There you go. Three. You can have a conversation, three way conversation. Well, you said three you toilets. Don't need to say what you have and you don't have to come in. Then you can survive anywhere you go. So practically with this you don't need water. So you will have compost also here. Yeah. When you certainly can. Sorry. So you take it out from there, huh? Yeah, that's the little toilet. Well, you take that's interesting. The compost toilet in Charles Dowding's home acres. Small holding. They don't keep any chicken here, so that's a good source of manure, human manure, also. Yeah. So that is aerated here also, and also the fumes and gases and everything goes up like that, back into the nature. Charles's home, a little bit long, some fruit trees, delicate kids orange red. And a few flowers. And a few bags of compost. And that is the end of our visit to the homemakers where Charles Doding grows his vegetables. 
in the 4th of the September 2016. Now heading back. How to create a new vegetable garden, producing a beautiful and fruitful garden from scratch. Charles Dowding, due to private issues that he had in his life, in 2013, I think, or 14, started a new garden. He moved out of the old garden that he had with his family, started a new life somewhere else in Somerset, and bought a new land, and then uh, started to create a garden the way that he started in his previous site. You may find uh, about that previous whole, uh, garden that he had in his other's book. But this is a book that uh, relates just to how he created that garden. Um, what I like about the book is that, first of all, it's full of pictures. Uh, the way that he done his uh, recreation of a garden. Then the second thing is that he's uh, he's writing about things that he has done himself. He's not talking about like this. What is that uh, lady, Klein, Kristen Klein or something, Iris Fowler and others, talking about uh, something which is not related really to, to them. It's just general knowledge. You can pick it from anywhere in any book and just uh, write about it. Kristen Klein, I think, is her name. It just, to me, seems like a, uh, or Alan Titmarsh and others. They're very plasticky, They're like very industrialized as if. They just pick things from here and there, then, then make it as if it looks as if they have done it. It's their own contribution, which is not true. But uh, Charles Dodding, although he has uh, his technique of the Nordic gardening, looks very similar to what people are doing here in England. I've seen a lot of... Uh, we do, uh, that is the raised bed. And I did also the Nordic method in the first year without even knowing that there is such a method, but I just saw that the, my land is full of weeds. Uh, first, I removed the bigger weeds, then for the smaller ones, I thought, oh, I cannot really cope with all that. I covered it with a thick layer of uh, mulch, this thick. Uh, my mulch was a, a compost that I had in the allotment from the previous owner. And I spread it over that, and that worked as a mulch. It stopped the weeds growing vigorously, and I, the whatever grew, I could easily manage and pull them out. So Charles Dodding has uh, basically suggested such things. He experiments with different kind of mulch, of course, uh, cardboard, paper, um, compost, um, homegrown compost, proprietary compost, the one that you buy from the companies and nurseries and uh, manure, different kind of manures and also and uh, and he discusses the result that he had from those experiments. The book uh, is published in 2000 uh, I'm right where is the publication date? In 2015 yeah and uh, for the first time, one of his books is in the hardcover, so that's a good good addition. He had two more books in the hardcover, I should say, actually. But this is, a, this is a real hardcover with real material related to gardening. So it has two parts, contents. Then part one is about clearing ground and preparing soil. Part two, sowing and growing. I really like the, this book. I take it with me wherever I'm going for a short journey, or long journey even. Uh, I take the book with me, my uh, uh, luggage, and I uh, start to read it. Really enjoyed reading this. Practically because it inspires me. It just makes me feel that, oh, yeah, I have to go on to do this myself also. Many of it uh, is common knowledge, common sense, but uh, there's some gems in this. I don't approve some parts of the thing, which has not he has not discussed it here, but you know, if you look, look in his website, Charles Doding talks about something called biodynamics, which doesn't look anything. It's not scientific, it's not science, it's just kind of practically magic. But, but he, has not, he has not touched those things. By dynamic to them, the way that they, they describe it in, the pub, in this book and publications, is uh, if you think there's something innocent about the lunar cycles and the phases of the moon, planting according to the phases of the moon and so. But when you go to the depth of the biodynamic, it's magic. 
they believe in the some magic magical things and the the bury things they have rituals they have uh, it's also a business you know they say if 500 something called 500 is a kind of liquid that they do and they, they do uh, spreading around the farm in four corners a bury a horn and uh, you know, silly stuff but uh, I cannot be convincing that how how this this um, rituals affects your land but not the neighboring land or if there's a field for it how far that field uh, is uh, reaching like the field of uh, you know gravity or electromagnetic field it must have a range and does it change with the reverses uh, uh, reverse of the distance and uh, yes yeah, square square reverse of the square uh, reverse of the distance squared. Anyway, whatever. Uh, this is about those those things. It describes sometimes uh, in some parts what you can do in different seasons, how you can uh, uh, protect your, what kind of mulch you can use if you start from the zero, how to actually, without digging, cover your ground, then uh, use it as a mulch. And uh, quite inspiring. I like the way that he, uh, he has given us also some cards. The way that he has described it is I really like it. The way that he has done it himself, and he's talking about what he has done actually himself, is really uh, inspiring. You don't find books by people who have done the thing and then they talk about their experience. Charles Oding is one of those people who does this. Um, by the way, I talk, when I was talking with him, he told that he likes actually Jeremy Corbyn, so we can call him probably in a way supporter of Jeremy Corbyn. Uh, he's a decent guy, nice, pleasant guy, and a decent human being, and uh, a good gardener. He, he, he uses his garden for growing salad leaves for selling to the restaurants. He has videos about it on YouTube, you can watch, uh, find them and watch them. And also, he makes uh, salad uh, vegetable boxes and sell it. And also, he has a lot of lectures. Of course, he's, he writes books and sells his books. His books are selling well.